Dwellers in Darkness, Chapter 8 Huki was the first to awaken. Kongu was beside him, still unconscious. The Torah of Stone's mind was full of questions. How? Where? Why? The how was easily answered. Someone had attacked the two Toamari from behind, shortly after Jella and his team left for the island of Artadax. Who that might have been, he had no idea, but he certainly looked forward to meeting them again. Where was easy too. They were in the Colosseum in Metru Nui. He half expected to wake up locked in a cell, but that wasn't the case. He didn't even see a guard out in the corridor. Their weapons were gone, but they still wore their masks. Why? That was what he was about to find out. He gave Kongu a hard rap on the mask. Wake up, Stiff Breeze, he said. We have work to do. Mm, what? said Kongu, shaking his head. Where are we, and why are you hard-hitting me? Huki was already up and on his way out the door. Let's find out. He had only gone a few steps out into the corridor when a cloud of black crystalline shards appeared in front of him. It rapidly coalesced into the form of the black-armored female who had first told the Mari they had to go to Artadax. Huki suddenly thought he knew who the who had been. So, he said, it was all some kind of trick. If you wish to think of it that way, the figure replied. I am Jomak, an agent of the Order of Matanui. For reasons of its own, the Order wanted the Toamari out of Metrunui for a time, and we wanted the Viserac taken off the board, hence our decision to kill two Gakko with one stone. Kongu was standing behind Huki now. But you thought we would all quickly, didn't you? Jomak nodded. And when you didn't, we had to step in. We couldn't have you interfering. With what? asked Huki. Jomak fragmented again and flew down to the end of the corridor. There was a window here that looked out over southern Metru Nui. As she reformed, she said, With this. Huki and Kongu looked out at their city, stunned. It no longer looked like the place they had been living in for weeks. Now it resembled nothing so much as a fortress. High walls had been constructed on the coastline, with huge weapons mounted atop them. Weapon emplacements were also visible atop buildings. Streets leading to the Colosseum were barricaded, with Order of Masanui agents on guard. Matoran of all kinds were visible, frantically building war defences. What is going on here?! Huki exploded. The Makuta have suffered serious defeats, but they are not yet vanquished, said Jomak. We know we will need one final battle to destroy them, but we want to pick the spot. So we leaked word through servants on stealth that we have turned the Great Furnace into a virus works to replicate the protocell eating virus that killed Makuta Kojo. You made Metru Nui a target? said Kongu in disbelief. It was already a target, said Joe Mac. We just made it a better prepared one. Where are the Turaga? demanded Huki. The Turaga proved uncooperative, Jomak replied. They have been asked to remain in the Colosseum for the duration. And just what is it you will be asking us to do? asked Kongu. Nothing, said Jomak. Nothing at all. Stay out of our way. Your interference may well get all the agents killed, not to mention yourselves. With that, Jomak turned back into a cloud of crystal and floated out the open window. Huki watched her go, his anger building with every moment. Nobody picks a fight using my city, then tells me to stay out of it, the Tower of Stone growled. NOBODY! Makuta Miserix and the Six Tower Haga turned as one to see figures emerging from the dimensional portal. They were ready for anything, except perhaps for what they saw. Toa Helrix emerged first, followed by Kitongu. The portal began to shrink behind them, then suddenly widened again to omit two more figures. The Haga recognized neither one, but it was obvious that Helrix did. Axon, what are you doing here? And... What has happened to Brutaka? 
Axon explained rapidly how he and Brutaka had tracked down the pool where the Makuta species was created, only to be attacked by it. Brutaka had been changed by it somehow, and insisted that they come here immediately, wherever here might be. He had used his mask of dimensional gates to make the journey. Then, was it that which opened a gate allowing us to escape where we were? wondered Helrix. No, answered Brutaka, in a voice like thunder. There is another Olmak, and it has been misused, and worse, it may well threaten us all. It's going to have to wait in line, said Toweri Rooney. Listen, we all came down here looking for Makuta Pterodax on your instructions. Then we were told it was full of traps and a place of death. Well, so far, I see no Pterodax. I run into one pretty good trap, and nobody's died. When do things start happening? A bolt of energy shot out from a bank of machinery nearby. It struck Brutaka, shattering his mask to pieces. You had to ask, Bamonga grumbled to Iruni. My apologies for the abrupt greeting, said the voice of Pterodax. It was strangely soft, and seemed to be coming from all around. But I couldn't have Brutaka helping you to leave prematurely. Not when we have so much to discuss. Makuta, said Helrix. I know what you're planning. You won't get away with it. You know, Pterodax repeated, amused. If you knew, you would be fleeing in panic, Toa. No, you suspect, just as Zaktan does. Or perhaps he does more than that. Mm, a loud hum filled the room. A moment later, both Zaktan and the water tank in which he dwelled exploded. I suppose now we will never know, said Pterodax. Now, what shall we talk about? The economy of stealth? The latest Akalini scores? The efforts to turn Metru Nui into an armed camp? No, I know. Let's discuss the end of your universe as you have known it. The island of Destrol was in ruins. The fortress of the Makuta had been pounded largely to rubble. Vazon, the sole living and conscious occupant of the fortress, had already departed using a mask of dimensional gates. Others were already moving through the shattered rooms, looking for survivors or loot. Inside a subterranean chamber, a lone figure awoke. He knew his name, Takanuva, and he remembered being kidnapped from his universe by a Makuta. After that, everything was a blank until he woke up here, in a cracked canister. He kicked the lid of the canister to pieces and stepped out into the chamber. All around him were duplicates of him, some dead, some still trapped in suspended animation. That answered one question. He had not been the only one taken. Something was nagging at him. Something else that was not as it should be. What was it? He was certain that his armour had not been all black before, so that was one possibility. But was that the answer? No, no it wasn't. He was almost positive that one other thing had been different prior to his awakening. He was pretty sure, could have sworn really, that he hadn't wanted to destroy the world before. But now? <laughs> the Dark Takanuva just couldn't wait to get started. To be